All right. So, so from from the previous class, uh, we were all uh, going ahead with the Ansible. So Ansible is based out of Python. The it's it's constructed or, or it's built on uh, Python. There are three different flavors of Ansible. The one is the normal Ansible. The second one is Ansible using Red Hat, and the third one is Ansible engine. Okay, so the last two are paid versions, and uh, the advantages you are going to get support. You have uh, centralized features. Uh, you can have cloud integrations so red hat is going to provide you a cloud integration and also they have the dedicated engineers whom you can reach out during any uh, outage or during any uh, uh, kind of uh, production scripts uh, issues but in the case of ansible the first one is way which is free open source and that is where we are covering in the class okay we are not dealing with these two because you are going to get support from the uh, vendors or, or the company, right? This is something which you have to do it on, on your own. So from previous class, we have uh, gone through the back end of this Ansible, uh, uh, basically Ansible for network automation. So there are three main components. The first one is host, which is also called as inventory. The second one is called as Ansible CFG, which is configuration for this uh, whole Ansible. Okay, we can do a lot of configuration changes in terms of encryption port number, timeout values, uh, the key checking, okay. So from my my uh, lab point of view, I have only done one configuration changes that was disabling the key checking, okay, by making it false. And the last one here is playbook. So these are three components, but I don't say that that that's end or that's that's it about ansible uh, there are a lot of other things also but these are the three building block without which you cannot do any basic script so these are three basic one now you can play around with a lot of things so let's say playbook can be constructed in a new folder okay so so it's called as ansible tree let me let me tell you how how does ansible tree look like So let's say you reach to the Ansible folder, okay, and you do ls. ls is nothing but listing. So once you do listing, you will see ansible.cfg, which is configuration file. You will see uh, the host file, okay, where, where you are going to define your host machines, uh, like so and so IP address, so and so username, so and so password. All those will come inside host file and of course the playbooks. Apart from this, you can also have uh, integrated features enabled. Let's say you have some uh, variables, okay? Or let's say you have some uh, multi-vendor devices in your en environment. Like you have Junos, you have iOS, you have Nexus and each one will fall into its own category. Okay, so each each one can have its own parameters. Like let's say Nexus have so and so timeout and so and so login credential, whereas uh, iOS will have so and so timeout and so and so credential, right? So to make that easier and not to make it like look like mess in one script and lot of things, you can divide this. So what you can do, you can have something called group variable. Group variable is one folder which will contain the unique feature throughout the devices like let's say if username and password is same for the entire collection now you can place it inside group variable okay 
similar way to the group variable you also have something called host or host variable okay so what you can do is you can just ignore this part when you have a dedicated host variable you can just ignore the default part now here you can have your multi vendors like you can have nexus os you can uh, list all the ips of your ios you can have uh, xc family xr family and so and so and the universal variable or universal values will be put up in the group variable this is for uh, individual uh, values individual credential individual uh, values or, or or any uh, timer or something like that okay along along with this um you can create a folder for playbook and inside this playbook would be your all playbooks or in yml format okay we make use of yml in ansible ansible works on yml is also called as yaml okay it's a marked up language now there is a little confusion why dot ml and why not yml or when to use yml and why to not use yml so basically both are same okay they they do the same job but it's up to the environment that you are going to use some platform like uh, windows they prefer the three extensions they don't consider four extension okay so depending upon such platform is when you will make use of uh, uh, the right one like let's say if you cannot or is, if your operating system is not letting you to uh, have four alpha uh, letters in your extension now that is when you can use make of this but both all together are the same they are marked up blankly okay i I'll, I'll, I'll tell you i'll discuss how yml is written what is the syntax within yml okay so just let me tell you ansible understand the task or the uh, object or or any um, uh, task related is it's written in yml format now within this yml uh, yml format you can have various approach to execute the task okay one is called the static approach static approach approach is like when you type show ip in brief now this is a uh, static command right this is a static command now let's say you wanted a dynamic command like say show ip in brief and uh, you want to have little more uh, filtered value uh, when devices are up or when uh, you need the output only for that now let's say that's something more relevant to us or dynamic in nature this was just a static right so we can have two ways uh, of templates or we can have we can uh, manipulate the job so all these extra manipulation or requirement can be served with the help of jinja okay so jinja is a templating language so this jinja is incorporated with ansible also jinja is incorporated with another competitor which is called as flask okay flask puppet salt so you have multiple competitors for ansible these are the competitors and this jinja plays a uh, hold with all their their jinja is good with all other uh, languages as well so as of now we are dis uh, discussing about ansible so i'm writing jinja along with ansible okay so this is a template which can be used within yml to make your script more dynamic now how is dynamic concept or what is the concept of dynamic so let's say you are dealing with some conditions if yes no right that's more dynamic in nature so that is when you will bring your jinja into picture let's say you are writing some macros let's say you are writing some decision making uh, lines okay let's say you have the values uh, given you are you are giving the option to your engineer to enter the values and that will accordingly go and get uh, effective on the jinja template okay in the case of static it's all defined inside the script okay 
all the values like let's say I want to configure router BGP 65000 router ID 1.1.1 now this is a static example this will be placed inside static kind of YML template and we will be executing how is Jinja getting the dynamic feature is we will not define this on the script we will put some syntax like refer to variable or we will say that refer to conditions okay now these variable can be used here we can have a separate folder or a separate file for variables and i can define that nexus box will have so and so variable now this will refer back to this variable now that's more dynamic right i can have a different concept on for uh, nexus i can have different for ios and a similar way so that is how your static and jinja is tunable in the case of ansible so first i'll go and show you some static templates okay so i need this server which is a ubuntu platform so where is my ansible installed so let's see if i get over here so my ansible is 2.9.9 okay and it's installed on this part so let me go over there fine so i'm over here when i do listing i can see a lot of files from my previous class how do i see those three main components what are the three main components that i was talking about i was talking about host file um, ansible configuration file and playbooks okay so where do i see them so to see host file to see the host file i am going to do cat and i'm going to look for host file and here is where i have defined my first device ip I, i'm going to say that this is the group name okay automation switch and beneath the group name i'm disclosing my ip address of the device i am saying this is admin uh, username is admin and this is the password okay so this is with respective to defining ip address and the credential now in ansible prior to 2.5 there was something called as local provider okay so this local provider used to connect to the cisco box or the remote host and then it used to pull the ios family and then it used to connect on ssh okay but nowadays after after 2.5 we have a specified provider who is responsible for ssh and that's called as network cli okay so you will see in the template making use of local and network cli so network cli is the latest one it's it's a dedicated for network devices in case of network cli we have to define which ios family or what uh, device family i am going to make use of so that is why over here i have mentioned it's ios now i can show you both of the, the things one with one example with this the second example with this okay so for that i will go to nano and i'll gray out so we know how do we apply the comment because we have covered our theoretical topics so i'm going to gray this out okay and i'm going to save this okay so it needs pseudo password so i'm not on a root so let me take it root privilege okay with the pseudo s now if i go to the nano nano host and now if i create this out okay so let's say i just uh, have put my host host configuration so what is the second over here it's ansible how do i see ansible file so this is my ansible file which con consists of lot of configuration okay and i have only done one change that is with respect to key checking so let me show that 
so if you see all are in a grade or all are in a comment section that means by default the the predefined values are uh, working out okay so you can change them so you need to only change the uh, comment section you have to untick that so that those lines are effective See, this is all configuration file you can you can change the values of ssh okay so this is the one line which i have actually changed and nothing else host key checking i i'm, I'm making use of ssh username and password right i'm not making use of key checking so that's why i have turned it off now regarding the third component it's called as playbook so how is playbook created it's created with the extension yml so i'll open one of the uh, playbook from our previous class so this was one of them right so let's see what is the content of that so this is the content of my first playbook so i say i'm see this is this is the way we are going to start our yml so if you see this three hyphens it, it's going to say that you're starting with your yml template okay now you're starting the template and then you're going to define the task now this is optional you don't have to do this it's just a way to define multiple tasks because your ansible playbook can have multiple tasks like running the configuration taking the configuration um, might be doing ssh to different box so each task is defined with its own name so you can see one name here you can see the second name here okay so it says i'm taking the backup what are my devices that uh, that the backup would be taken that's mentioned here what are the ga gather facts so basically i can disable this just to show you a uh, very basic one so i make it as false okay gather fact is when you need to take date and time or you want to take the host name of a server since we are making use of uh, the network device and i'm going to make use of very uh, simple backup without any date and time stamp added so i'll put it as uh, false only now this is connection that i was talking about okay i am saying that it's a local local is prior to 2.5 ansible now now we are currently running ansible 2.9 okay so we don't make use of local but i'm just demonstrating you an example so i do mention the task here task is where you have to define the purpose of running this if you're taking show run or what what exactly are you trying to do okay and then you say the task is to take the backup you say this is the ios command now this is a predefined command this is a predefined syntax in case of ansible so you have two major syntax one is called as ios command and other one is called as ios config so these are two main thing in ansible and you will see a lot of commands predefined commands okay so this is ios command okay i'll show you ios config also so when we make use of ios command we we have to define it's a ios command and what are the commands that we are going to use it and that's going to return the values so let me go back here okay and let me tell you what is happening so basically i'm saying i am going to run a show command so i'm making use of ios command if i was about to configure something then i would have made use of ios config to to write ch some changes now it is only read only okay i'm not read or uh, i'm not reading and writing i'm only reading only so for read only ro i'm making use of ios command what is the command that i want to uh, read it's show output where is this show uh, this, where is this show run uh, content going to be saved it's going to save on this variable which is register the the reason i am registering is because i want this variable to be pulled out later on uh, to save this file okay 
I can remove this part. This is to save the copy on an external file. Let's say I just want to read it on my terminal on my screen. I can do that. I can do that also. Okay. So this is for reading reading the backup. So I I wrote my first task of reading the show run output, and now I am reading the or I am doing the second task. Okay. It's called as task number two. So I am defining the name. I am saying that I am going to uh, save this on a customized folder. This is again a uh, inbuilt syntax called as copy this is the content content is nothing but i am making use of my variable output and i am making use of std out uh, zero okay now these are called as written values in ansible so let's see what is written values in ansible and why do we use this So you will see there are written values like std out and std line. So these are two important written values. So these are the values that's gonna take this information. Okay. So it's gonna take the information of this uh, output, show run output. Okay. And then it's gonna paste it in this destination. Now you might be wondering why did I give zero? What what would what would happen if I give it one, two, three, or four? Okay, it has a it has a reason for that for giving zero because I'm making use of one single command, so the indexing of this is one. Now when you take the help of return values uh, of std out, okay. So if you see there are two things now, right? I'm talking about the first one. So when I take the first one I have to mention the indexing value 0 1 2 3 that is helpful when I have multiple commands okay if I say 0 that means it's going to take the output of this only if I say 0 and 1 then it's going to take this and the second one if I say only one then it's gonna skip the first and take only the second okay so that's up to your requirement if you need one of them Okay, whereas std out lines is gonna give you for all the commands. Okay, by default, it's gonna take consider all of them. Okay, so this is std out. That means I need the output for the first one. Okay, and where do you want to save on a customized folder? So you are giving the complete part. Now remember, when you are making use of ro, then you have to define this folder manually. Don't expect your Ansible will create this folder because you are making use of a RO command, not a RW command. If you would have made use of RW command like iOS config, then yes, Ansible would have created a folder for you. Okay. So now I have to see if I already have this or I have to create this. If it's not, I will create. If it's there, then that's good, well and good. Okay. And how how am I saving my password? Oh, sorry. How, how am I pass? saving my path it's it's on this uh, format okay i say show run this is variable okay this is called as variable and if you see two curly brackets that say jinja path okay so i'll tell you the different types of jinja now in this case this is a jinja notation okay and i'm co calling this as a variable when I have curl, two curly bracket and uh, and a word inside that, that's nothing but it's a variable. And what is this variable going to say or going to call? It's going to call the host name that is being defined. So in this case, it will go to this and it will see what kind of host name or IP address I have defined. So in my case, it's a IP address. Okay, so it's gonna take that IP address and then. If I want date and time, I can include this. But if I include this, then make sure the gather fact has to be true. But in my case, it's false. So I'm going to remove that part. Okay. I'm going to remove that date and time part because it's more like a static at this moment. It's all static. It's not a dynamic. It's not getting changed with the date and time. It's a static uh, kind of template. Okay. So simple template. If I execute now. So how do I come out of this control and X is gonna ask me you want to save uh, uh, the config yes or no yes and enter okay and now I'm going to run 
this playbook okay i have not checked but i can see the backup folder is already present okay so no no need to worry okay so i can see my job is done so it played the task the task is the playing is nothing but the first particular line okay if i so this is the playbook okay name of the playbook and then it will check the task the two tasks so let's see so it checked the first task where i said taking the backup where i was executing show run comma and then the second task mentioned was to take the output on a customized folder right so the playbook the two task and the recap of whatever happened so if you see there are green and yellowish color green is when your job is successfully done the yellow yellowish color is when you had some changes okay now the changes could be because of the time stamp the uh, the file size right it could be because of a different reason and we can see that what 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 were the changes by making use of the verbose okay so the more v you give you get more packet level uh, debugs if you go with just one you will get little human readable so let's let's go with three okay okay so i should add this on the ansible playbook okay and i'm going to run this so it says it is going to show you everything okay okay now you don't see any changes okay it's it's only green so let me do once again to see if i get something on yellowish color okay nothing so that's fine if you don't get yellowish that means there was no change while saving okay so let's see what has happened in the back end so this is your configuration fi uh, file as soon as you run the job the configuration file was taken up okay your uh, playbook this is a config file this is a python module and all other things the python versions this is the playbook that that's included okay playbook this is a playbook yml that you're running this is the first meta tag or meta header okay uh, this is the name of your yml playbook taking backup this is the first task task number 1 where you are saying a uh, show run command or where you are taking the backup or you are executing show run command right so show run is going to give you some output so this was the command that you triggered okay so once you do show run now can you see std out that is your return value it's it's bringing up those value to that variable okay so that this return value std out okay that's that's bringing up the values till over here and this is std lines and where is it getting saved it's getting saved on the task number 2 so the task number 2 was to create uh to create the folder it won't create the folder in this case because it's a ios command which is ro so it's only gonna see if the folder exists and then it's gonna paste those information so it it will look for that path somewhere here okay it will see if the path is existing or not and then you can see it's gonna have the diff check okay so the diff check is so so this diff check was done because there was already a file saved okay and it's gonna paste the new file it's gonna overwrite it that is why you saw those yellowish thing on the first time whereas in the second and third time there was no yellowish time because you had the uh, latest file which was copied on this text like a one second back and then you executed to second and third time so basically there was no uh, changes okay on the first time might be that file was present from our previous class and from previous class to this there was a gap of one so there could be a lot of changes might be the date would have changed might be the uh, bytes value or or any numbers any counter if there is any mismatch then it's gonna show you that in yellowish color and that's because 
when you do verb post you see what happened it's it's going to check after and before okay the diff check will be done and basis on that you see the color notation now you don't see this because you took a fresh copy and the second third fourth attempt you just are going to have the same uh, diff check for after and before so the content will be same not uh, different right so it did it did the diff check and then it is all done okay so this is the final file and then you get the recap so that is so and so done so this is when you have local now this is not recommended option because we have our own connection uh, function so we we will make use of network cli so when i do make use of network cli and if i run this i'm going to get some error and the error is because i have not defined the host of my uh, box okay it says unable to automatically determine host so what is what does it say it it's it's because you are making use of network cli but you have not defined the host i'll go to my host file and i will say that this is a device which is ios type okay i say this is ios type and i'll save this and i'll re go uh, and redo this thing so now the network cli will know it's a ios family and it will get executed so you can see it's been executed successfully and let's go and check this part okay so i can make use of cat backups show and text so you can see the whole format is been saved now so if you see the file name it's it's something which will get overlapped right let's say this was taken today and uh, in the next day might be uh, tomorrow if i come back and if i rerun i'm going to get i'm going to replace this but i don't want it to be replaced instead i would make it more uh, what do you say dynamic let's say i i make use of date and time concept so what happens is i will have one copy of the uh, file saved with the uh, the previous day date and time and uh, while while executing on the next day the file name will get embedded with the present day so that they don't get overlap so at the end i can see my 30 days of backup or uh, created on a daily basis right so only thing that i have to do here is i'll put this true and i'll come to the destination and i'm going to include ansible date and time ansible date and time okay so let's save this and let's rerun okay now let's quickly check and there was some change what is the change so if you see destination different check see the change value is mentioned here since there was no file okay there was no file this is the first file that's going to going to get created see the the destination now is this okay so let's verify the content of backup folder so you can see now there are two files this was from our previous example and this is the latest example show run so i'm going to say 2020 and if you see the output they are they are same okay so this is how we bring bring up uh, the basic thing that is gather fact and connection okay fine so let's uh, go and uh, talk about some more examples so let's say i have this template okay and now i want to make use of multiple commands 
don't make use of tab make use of space that's much more uh, suggestible okay so let's say i make use of show ip entry and i save this and i remove the verb post and i'll say uh, run this okay so it has run successfully let's verify the content so if you see i only have the output of my first command okay now if that's not understandable what i'll do is i'll make use of the second command okay i'll change the std out value and if i run this once again Okay, there was some changes. Let's see what is the change. So do you see the show run was taken down and you have the second command coming in, right? So what does it prove? The first way is to take for particular command only. Okay, whereas you need for all the two, then you will make use of std outlines. Now it's uh, depending upon your requirement. If you need for one, You'll make use of this if you need for second you will you still can make use of this because you cannot achieve those kind of uh, filtering in std outlines okay so in std outlines the output will be line by line once again the, the output will also be a little different okay so let me go back to this and let me say i need the output for both of them so i need the output for first and on a next line break i will also take or capture my output for the second command which is indexing number one and i'll close this okay so this two curly brackets is nothing but it's to say this is a variable okay it's a variable in this case so i have the content of two commands and i'm taking it within the main file and all all rest remain the same so i'll just save this and i'll run okay so successfully executed let's see the output okay so the output is much better you can see show running configuration and you can also see the second output okay so that proves that yes you can uh, make use of this to execute so let me uh, give a quick try by making use of std lines i've not tried this so i don't want to take any risk so i'll just do it for once and then i'll did it okay now let's run this okay that's great it has executed let's see the output see the the changes while you use std out and std uh, outlines okay so when you make use of std out it's going to take the exact values okay so it's when you are you are making use of raw command now i have discussed about raw shell command in the previous cases okay in the previous class so while we make use of the static approach like raw commands like show ip and show ip uh, all those raw raw commands it's better you make use of std out because it's gonna give you the exact output when you're making use of std outline when std out is writ written ansible always provide a list of strings so you got a lot of strings now okay each containing one item per line from the original output so you will see there are line by line uh, creation okay so let's see how how does this look like so you can see line by line okay so now this is not very human friendly so i'll just put this back to the normal process of std out zero 
backslash n okay backslash n and then i say output dot std out one and close this so if you rerun the output is gonna be much better okay so there was some minor change okay Okay, I'm not closing this. Okay, now it's done. So let's rerun. Okay, successfully executed. Let's see the output. Yeah, much better. The exact raw raw output that you get from the raw CLI commands. Okay. Fine. So let's uh, go to the next script. The next script is when you have username and password within your uh, scripting so let's say if uh, i bring bring up the username and password okay so what i'll do is i'll create a variable called as variable okay or okay and then i'm going to define the login parameters i'm going to say username admin password cisco do do i have any enable password so i can mention authorization password as cisco and authorize so basically this is for enabling uh, the enable privilege okay if no if you don't need you can take this down you don't need those commands authorize okay task will remain as it is without any change and uh, rest we can just keep it keep as it is or instead of going and checking every time the text file I, I will take the output on my terminal itself okay because I have my variable register over here now that will be very easier for me to, to take the output so I'll just make use of uh, the debug command so it should be beneath this so I say debug and I'll say variable equals to print. What am I going to print? I'm going to print output std out lines. Okay, now I'm making use of std out lines. Okay, so let's give it a try. What, what do we get here? And before that, I'll also go to the host file to take out those username and password to make sure that now it's not considering this. Okay, so this is grayed out. I, I have taken down the username password. So my username and password are on my uh, playbook. So let's let's run this. Could not find expected the error appears to be on line number 24 okay so let's do a thing let me bring this up okay something like this and give it try a malfon Block was encountered. Okay. A uh, single space over there. Okay, much better. But says no authentication available. Okay, why is that? So it says it's a variable login. I have defined username, password. Okay, how if I take this to local? gather fact false and i say it's a local now okay 
ओके यूजर नेम पासवर्ड पासवर्ड ऑथराइज टास्क आईओएस कमांड्स ओके आई हैव नॉट मेंशनड द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग आई हैव नॉट मेंशनड द एसएसएच ओवर हियर सो हाउ इज इट एसएसएच गोना हैपन सो आई विल कम ओवर टू द कमांड्स and i'm going to create a new variable i'm going to define a dictionary so these are dictionary values okay these are called dictionary and this is a listing so we we will see that why yml is supporting dictionary and list okay so that is the uh, component of a yml templates so now i'm defining my dictionary so i'm showing a uh, provider is let's say uh, so where is my credential it's here right so i'm going to define the login otherwise otherwise how is they going to take ssh because i have disabled from my host file so only way that they know is by making use of provider uh, function okay so now now what happens is it it knows the logins are defined here i'll come out of this and rerun okay so the issue is on this line because i have to make use of a string notation is there any space or something okay provider commands register this is going to be only output because we are making use of output as variable mapping values are not allowed in this context okay so what is not right register debug ios command provider okay so looks good to me but is there something which is missing so let me check here okay uh am i missing the space okay yeah so yeah there there should be a space okay that's that's a uh, mandatory thing in dictionary so when you make use of dictionary after the columns you must have space if you don't have space then uh, the dictionary is wrong the the format of dictionary will be wrong so key colon space and then value okay so it got executed and uh, i can see it on my terminal because that's what i have defined so what does it prove it proves that i have my uh, password and username all the things inside my script i am calling my dictionary okay i'm going to uh, create this a variable and i'm going to call that ansible provider now if you want to know what is ansible provider okay connecting to networking device so it's it act as a argument okay so this provider will con consist of multiple arguments which is used to call the uh, call the value okay this is a argument and which is unpackaging 
the values or it's calling this dictionary format okay that that's provider which is doing the work so so what what are other argument so basic arguments are host port username user password transport authorize so these are all arguments which are which is used to call the uh, unpacked uh, packet unpackaged value or uh, the dictionaries okay so in this case We are making use of this. So we are making provider to call these di uh, dictionary values. And within this, you can see these are variables. These are variable which will pull the uh, host name. Or so this is a good uh, template. So this template you are defining the complete playbook like host name, username, password, and uh, transport to be CLI. You are defining your CLI, uh, your variable where you have your username password defined now where is this configured this is configured in your host file okay say for example if i take you to my host file okay so it's basically defined here in the host file ansible has a such user so you can see that ansible ssh user so this is defined in the host file and you are just calling that okay and then you make the actual task you say this is the configuration now the configuration file is in uh, jinja template it's a dynamic in nature config.j2 so have they given the content of that uh, may not be given anyway uh, it's is it's easier so you just need to have uh, the Jinja template configured within this and then you are making the SSH establishment with the help of provider okay so that's how this works now let me go back to host and I'll remove the password I don't need password on inside my script so I take this out I'll go to my playbook I'll take all other things which is not required okay I don't need provider now because I'm already gonna call it using uh, the other factors okay so I don't need that it's already defined here so let's give it a try now okay so that's how it execute when when you remove the username and password okay so when i come over here let's say uh let's say i i take down this uh, i take out this net, uh, local and introduce network cli once again uh, let's say there were user uh, the enable privilege like a password and uh, the enable secret okay so you can make use of these components okay become method enable so it's when you need the enable privilege yes you can define the variables once again or you can just exclude that okay So network CLI will support all the other components. So what is network CLI? This plugin is gonna give you connection to the remote devices over SSH. Okay. So this is a newly introduced. It's it's after 2.5 when this was introduced. So pre prior to uh, 2.5, it was local which was acting as a SSH. Okay. And what all what all things can you configure? over on uh, this on over on this kind of ssh mechanism you can make use of become become methods okay host and there are other couple of things see the network os which we are using uh, inside the host file to define the operating system okay so port numbers the terminal all those things there are a lot of things so what is the first two doing so basically the first two are used for 
enable okay so what it does this become a cli normally this means enable mode to bring up the enable mode So when I say become and if I say the boolean value yes that's equivalent to trigger out the command enable see let's say we are we are on this and I type enable and if I say enter okay it's gonna ask me for a password there is where I am going to give this and I, I uh, come out of uh, the enable to the user executive mode okay so that is what is happening here that it's depend on your requirement if you don't need you can take this uh, out okay so let's take this out I don't need this okay fine so what else so I'll I'll show you one more a very small script okay so the script is to configure something okay so let's say I have task and I say task is to configure VLANs okay I see I need So I am going to say it's iOS VLAN. I am going to say the VLAN ID would be uh, 20. And I am going to call this or give it as a name of server. Okay. This is, this is why am I using this? Let me show, tell you. Ansible iOS VLAN. Okay. So so in in case of your latest module like 2.9 and all those things so you can see there are lot of added uh, values okay so you can see you have iOS VLAN where you can create the new VLANs okay so multiple VLANs can be created you can also assign them to the interface with with this command so you have iOS VLAN you are creating uh, or mapping VLAN 100 on these interface so basically a uh, layer 3 interface or a layer 3 VLANs whereas this was layer 2 configuration you are creating a VLAN and you are giving it as a name so this was L2 VLAN creation this is L3 VLAN creation okay and then you can make use of the port channel to aggregate so where you define your uh, VLAN the name the interface that uh, basically the members uh, the two members okay and all other things so a pretty simple script and if I run this okay so let's see if it has really executed or not show VLAN brief okay so I have the new VLAN now VLAN 20 so with this module we, we, we can see there are there are couple of things that we can do it on a switch level we can configure a lot of things so what are the returnable value the list of configuration mode commands to send to device okay okay now now uh, a little theory a little theory okay I, I, I will do little uh, a few theory now the first one is regards to the YML so as you all know Ansible make use of YML inside its playbook okay 
Now YML is very easier to write and understand. Okay, when compared with your Jinja and compared with your XML, YML is very easiest and this is a latest in the among all the three. Okay, XML is pretty oldest. Then you had Jinja and then YML was introduced. So YML can also be written as YAML. The extension would be YML and YAML accordingly. Okay. As I told you, some operating system don't let you to have four letters in the extension. So this is preferred most of the time. What kind of data structure that it's going to use? It's going to use the key value pair. Okay. So your YML is written on a key value pair so which is like your dictionary okay in python we call such uh, uh, data structure as a dish uh, dictionary dictionary are ordered changeable and indexable okay so uh, the dictionary okay so basically if i if i show you how how, how these dictionaries look uh, are created So you see these are all example of dictionaries in a key and value format. So how, 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 what is the right format is these are called as key keys usually written in this format with colon give a space a single space and then mention the value. Okay. So throughout you will see it will be consisting of dictionary which is key and value pattern now apart from dictionary you can also see list format okay so you can also see the list format inside yml playbooks and how are these written how, how do you do you see the listing So you can see this hyphen mark. Okay, these are an example of listing. So let's say I have to define uh, multiple devices. Okay, so I say this is Nexus uh, Nexus box. I'm gonna give multiple IPs like one dot one dot one, two dot two dot two. 3.3.3 .3 okay now this is a data structure in a listing format this is key and value which is dictionary format the yml can also have listing format so basically your playbooks will be mixture of both it will be mixture of your dictionary and a list format accordingly okay so in the case of list inside dictionary let me take this all out Okay, I'm saying uh, I'm saying list inside dictionary. So I make use of three hyphens to start my YML. I define my first dictionary object. Let's say Nexus Nexus OS. Okay, I'm going to say I'm going to say the username in the dictionary format to be admin. Password again in a dictionary format. And now I'm gonna define multiple devices based on floor number okay let's say floor one okay on floor one i have so and so ips on floor number two i have so and so ips now let's say i make use of floor two and i'm gonna say the floor three has 3.3.3 .3. similar way it has 4.4.4 .4 .4, okay so this is a structure where you are 
including the list within dictionary okay now you can have multiple dictionaries only combinations of dictionaries so let's say i had username password i said floor 1 okay and i defined some ips like 1.1.1 and 2.2.2 .2 .2. now let's say i also have a different family of my uh, devices now i have ios okay so this will be my second dictionary in this case and always remember there will be one hyphen okay so this is the exact pattern so when you start a uh, multiple task so this is one task okay so you are starting the task with a hyphen so in this case i'm starting with one hyphen and now this is a ios box i'm gonna say okay much better so i'm gonna say username for ios would be admin and password would be cisco one two three and i say floor one one second the reason is on a floor one i can have collections of devices might be there are nexus boxes or might be there are ios boxes right and if you see the username password is different so that is why i created two different dictionary okay so i say on floor number one i have device 3.3.3 .3 which is a ios box and the credentials are this similar way i have one more device with 4.4.4 .4 so this is how we can have list of dictionaries okay this is one list this is one list which is nothing but th different task okay different task or different play place the different uh, play, uh, place that uh, place that's been over here now apart from the data structure that yml consists of there are few other things like uh, let's say we make use of this notation and this notation very often okay in the case of yml so what exactly are these two so the first one is called as uh, uh, the pipe or the grep okay and the second one is called as the fold lines so something like let's say i have a variable and i give this grep okay and then i write uh, this is nexus os device mirror copy would be pasted okay so this line what is it going to do it's going to create the mirror copy of this text okay three different lines and uh, uh, the the exact way it's gonna print it so don't don't uh, be bothered about indentation uh, error there will be no indentation error after this symbol okay so whatever you write there there will be no some you can write it uh, like say for example the next line will have uh, something like this so don't worry about the space and all so anything you write after this will be taken as a uh, mirror copy now the second one which is called as fold lines fold new lines so that is used when you have a very lengthy statement to define or say let, let's say your prompt something like this now it's difficult for someone to read right so what i do is i make use of new line concept so how it works is i say i define something i make use of that angular bracket and then i say this is for lengthy fonts only it's going to give output in single line okay so just to make a uh, readability uh, reason we make use of these angular bracket which will give the output in the single line okay so this was little bit on yml part okay and in ansible there are few keywords that we normally use like task target machine 
machine servers okay so task is the job that is included in your yml you can have multiple tasks in a list format okay so list one format can have a task for running show command the list two will have to take the output and save it somewhere right so those are tasks target machine is something where you will uh, configure the ansible so in my case it's a ubuntu box okay what is machine machine is where my vm is configured so my vm is configured on my uh, vm workstation server is where where your is a is a process where your machine will provide the service okay so who is providing the service it's a kvm that's providing me the service what is playbook playbook are the yml files of ansible okay that's that's uh, written here remote machine or device so this is where you run your ansible script so in my case this is cisco okay so these are few keywords here okay now similar way le let me also cover a few things about jinja 2 okay so jinja 2 is a template that we use it's used as a template you can see jinja is used in various languages not just in ansible along with ansible on flask puppet salt okay it's dynamic in nature that means it's it's used to give the dynamic functionality to your yml templates okay so you know yml templates are static in nature so you need some dynamic as you expand your data center as you bring in more devices the things will get changed you might have multi vendors you might have a set of configuration to be done at set a particular time so you cannot make use of static line to do the reconfiguration back to back okay so to bring the dynamic features we make use of jinja so <clears throat> How 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 is Jinja gonna help? What is what are the things that Jinja has which a static YML doesn't have? Like for example, you need some conditional statements. Okay, it's it's easier to define in Jinja. Let's say you need loops, so loops is also pro, uh, uh, supported in Jinja. You need macros. You can do macros. Macros are something which deals with the formula calculations. Okay. Even your Excel, the Microsoft Excel, have some macros where you can define the formulas and you can execute it. You don't need any programs to run. Macros are like small kind of programs that you can integrate. You can have filters for transforming data. Okay. So if you have some data structure, you can also uh, filter it uh, from that data. You can also make use of Jinja to have arithmetic calculations so it's more more dy dynamic more more in a real time scenarios that we can make use of jinja okay so these are few things why jinja can help us now what is a drawback of static versus dynamic templating okay static can be considered as yml whereas dy uh, dynamic can be considered as jinja 2 okay it's more often written with j2 extension so i'll i'll write it yml here so what are the key difference here So in case of static, we create individual files. Okay. For an example, 
let's say I have iOS device number one and I want to create 10 VLANs, VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30 and so on. Okay. Now this VLANs are on iOS 1. Now let's say I get a requirement for iOS 2 where I need to create a different set of VLANs. Right. So what happens? You will have a lot of templates created in your uh, in your organization. You need one template to run this job. You need second template to run this job. Right. Now how can you reduce this? So in with the help of Jinja, you're going to make use of condition. Okay, or you are going to make use of variables. Now what happens is while executing that main YML template, you are going to get real time access to mention those VLANs. Okay, so on the main VLANs, on the main VLANs, you can define what, what VLANs you need to create. You can say you need 10, 20 and 30 at this time. So this will go and check the parameters here. And over here, you're going to say you need VLAN ID and the VLAN ID will have something called name. Now, this will integrate one by one. Okay. It's more dynamic in nature. I'll, I'll give you uh, the example also where, where you can understand. So, YML is like you need to have different templates every time. Whereas Jinja, you have one template written. You just need to change the values only while executing. So, this is one better way for having dynamic okay and yes i'll show you one more uh, good thing that is something called as jinja parser might be you guys aware of this So you have any Jinja template, you can post it here and you can see how it works. Okay. So in my case, let me uh, go ahead and do a very simple uh, Jinja template. Let's say I define the condition for a for loop for I in range. Uh, let's give three. Okay. So this is the way we give uh, the condition in, in, in the case of Jinja. Then I say this is this is the variable. I'm going to make use of variable with two curly brackets. Variable. Okay. And then I have to close this with the percentage command and for okay so what did i get i got for loop generated for this simple jinja template okay it was more dynamic uh, more dynamic in nature if the same thing i want to have in a yml i have to define a single static line okay so <clears throat> something like this is the zeroth variable okay i have to type all three times this is the first variable this is the uh, second or second variable okay so this is is the this is the major change or difference between the two yml and template in yml i have to manually define what is what if i'm writing simple show vlan commands i have to say vlan 10 i say the name of this is server i then say so it becomes a mess when i have to make use of uh, this to create 100 of vlans right if i need to make use of 100 vlans i have to define the complete static way but with the help of this it's very simple i write the template and within my yml i'm just gonna say that so and so vlans i need to create and this is so and so the names have to be uh, be created along with uh, those VLANs. Okay, so that that's how these two are uh, seen in a real world. Okay, how how do we bring the Jinja template within YML? Okay, 
how do we get a Jinja template within a uh, YAML? Now that's something which will be helpful for every one of us. Okay, so let's say playbook, which is YAML. I start with three hyphens. I define a single hyphen and I call my playbook. Okay, I, I say the host are inside this. I create some variables to uh, define username and password. Okay, and then I define my uh, actual task. Okay, so this will come somewhere over here. Task one. So let's say this is first task, and within this task. I can name this or if I don't want to name then just make use of this and go with template option okay so when you type template you can now say uh, you, you can define the source now there is where you can call your Jinja template okay otherwise you would have end up with iOS config let's say iOS command and then you would have typed a few show runs or if you make use of show config, uh, iOS config, and here is where you would have defined the static VLAN, like VLAN 10, name VLAN 10, okay. Don't, don't forget the list format. So these are in a list, okay. And this is how the pattern would have gone until you need every, every line, okay. Now this can be very easier with the template option or with the Jinja. I just have to make use of Jinja. I, I, I just have to call that. Okay. I'll just call vlan.j2 and uh, whatever I want to uh, execute or whatever uh, option I want to execute the output. Okay. I can say it in the destination. So wherever, wherever this VLAN is present, you can define the destination. So let's say you it's on etc ansible inside a uh, Jinja template okay so within this folder this is created so that's what you are going to define to your YML that this has been to be called which is dynamic in nature and then this is the destination of this file this Jinja file and then within vlan.j2 vlan.j2 you can create those conditions like for loop. Let's say you want to have 10, uh, uh, you, you want to have 10 VLAN. So you can say for I in uh, so and so. Okay. Then you can define the VLAN. So you can mention a variable here like uh, VLAN ID. And then you can say VLAN name this to be pulled from your YML, okay, VLAN ID and end this, end for. So now what happens is you are gonna mention the VLANs, okay, you don't have to deal anything with the template, you are not going to change anything, you just have to enter the numbers that you want during those change window. So if you need 10, 20, 30, 40, enter those numbers and this is gonna take care of it okay you don't have to deal with typing individual lines 10 20 name them okay that that's gonna be replaced by this dynamic feature and this is how we call any jinja2 template and this is few uh, pattern okay I'll, I'll tell you what kind of patterns that jinja has so as we check we have uh, something with this format Okay, this is called as uh, conditions, okay, for controlling, for control statements, uh, especially your conditions or loopings for for loops or all those things, okay. Similar way, we have the second format, which is in this way. Now, this is, uh, this is used so this is used for uh, expressions or we can call it as variables okay so if you see here I'm making use of conditions and then I'm calling the variable 
VLAN ID. So because I need the variable to be defined, right? So this notations are used for variables. And the last one here is called as comment, commenting or the comment features. So you, if you see this kind of thing, then it's for comments or uh, to name the task. Okay. So let's say you are creating a Jinja template and you want to name uh, name something let's say this is vlan but you also have something for a uh, dhcp right so you can say below this line uh, you get config for dhcp and then you can go ahead and you can configure the dhcp statement okay so that's a comment section so these are the three important notations uh, in the case of jinja Okay, now how how exactly the YML template, okay, the YML template is gonna consider this as a as a template, okay? So what happens is the first thing it's it's gonna check is the expressions or what what whatever you're trying to use here. Okay, so this is also called as expressions. Okay, used for expressions. So first it will see expression. So let's say on, on, on your template, uh, you are calling some expression. Le, le, in previous example, I made use of uh, to define provider, let's say iOS. Okay, and this iOS or, or, or let's say var. So let, let me make use of var. So while having this kind of syntax or this kind of lines, your YML is gonna check this line, okay? And it's gonna see that this is to call the expression, okay? So this is called as Jinja expression where, where you're trying to call the features. Now let's say you your YML is seeing this kind of lines. Now such kind of lines are where your template is outside your script. In, in this case, the Jinja is within your script, right? This is within your script. You're just calling from one part to other part. But where is this? You're referencing to an external file. Now, when you have external referencing, you call or you have three ways for external referencing. Okay. The first one is called as absolute file path. You're going to say the exact file uh, path that this j2 is created or you will make use of the relative uh, relate relative to the project path okay so what you, what what your uh, yml does is it will first see the absolute file if if you have defined the path let's say you're not defined the path now what is your yml going to do it's going to look for this file inside the ansible project okay so it's gonna see where exactly uh, this has been created let's say at etc ansible it, it, it's gonna see if if the file is present on the current working directory or i can say current working directory so might be you have it on etc ansible uh, nexus boxes or nexus devices so it's gonna see uh, the path on the relate uh, relate relative basis this last one is relative to ansible folder okay if we don't see the absolute file path if we don't see the relative to project path now it's gonna see the third one okay relative to ansible folder which is the complete ansible folder So it's gonna see the entire Ansible folder and it will see if it can find this particular Jinja template. If it's not there, then it's gonna give you an error saying that this is not found. But before giving that error, it will do these three steps. It will see the exact location. It will see the uh, current working directory. If uh, if it's not found, then, then finally it will check the Ansible folder and that is where it will somehow get the uh, file, okay? 
ओके सो दैट एंड्स द जिंजा टॉपिक बट द क्लोजिंग नोट हियर इज द क्लोजिंग नोट नोट्स अबाउट जिंजा इज इट्स अ मॉडर्न लैंग्वेज इज अ डिजाइनर फ्रेंडली ओके इट्स यूज एस ए टेम्पलेट इन पाइथन एंसिबल फ्लास्क पपेट एंड एनी अदर लैंग्वेजेस इट्स फास्ट रिलायबल widely used okay for achieving the dynamic file generation based on parameters okay so this factors make jinja most most popularly used as a templating uh, language okay in the in the case of python okay so we will end wind up for the class today and uh, in the next class uh, might be i'll come up with few more pipe a uh, few more ansible scripts where i can show you the integration of uh, vlans i have some vlan jinja template as well where i can show the working of this okay and uh, what else is remaining so we have done with lot of portion uh, so let me see what what can i get uh, with respect to the topics okay so any doubt in the uh, in the class we discussed today yes you can you can make use of uh, this so you can uh, prompt your uh, script to ask for the password okay Okay guys so let's meet up in the next class and uh, have a nice day see you soon uh, thanks for joining